you want to tell people what it potentially yeah, is? So, I know there's a ton of controversy yeah. and confusion around it. So finasteride, there are patients who have taken finasteride who develop irreversible sexual neurologic symptoms. For example, permanent ED, libido, uh, uh, psychologic problems, depression, suicidal ideations. And I believe it's a real syndrome. I don't believe everyone who takes finasteride gets post-finasteride syndrome, but I do believe that there's a subset of patients who take finasteride who develop this condition. Now, there, I'm the minority. Most people do not, and I accept that. So the official position of the American Neurologic, uh, what is it, AUA yeah. uh, uh, Association is what? There, well, if you look at the package, insert, there are, it states there are patients who have prolonged uh, 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 treat, uh, side effects with yep. this drug. It says it. It's there. But the true definition of a statement on post finasteride, there's no statement. Essentially, most clinicians don't believe it exists. I do believe that there's a subset of patients who take finasteride that have a significant adverse effect. Um, and there's a, there's a plausible mechanism for that. I want to explain what that is. But the, the, the key thing is this. We were taught in medical school that uh, finasteride blocks the conversion from testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And that's it. That's all we were told. But that is only one fraction of the story mm. because each one of those steroids then goes into something called a neurosteroid, right? So DHT goes into androstenedione, androstenediol, that's the neurosteroid. Then you multiply that by six. So six steroids are blocked. And those six steroids then have a decreased conversion into their neurosteroids. And sorry, the six steroids are blocked because 5-alpha reductase acts on more than one exactly. steroid? Cortico, uh, preg, preg, progesterone, aldosterone. Uh, you can look at, there's a whole linear, it's not just testosterone. Oh, uh, I see, Okay, I see. so the, the problem, the biggest problem is when you block progesterone, getting into its neurosteroid called allopregnanolone. Why is that important? Because allopregnanolone has been implicated for depression, anxiety, cognition, right? So some of those neurosteroids are very important when it comes to depression, anxiety, mm. depression, and cognition, right? So much so that there has been an increase in suicide rates in men who've had this post finasteride syndrome. If you had to guess, yes, what percentage of men who take finasteride experience negative side effects that persist upon the cessation of the drug? I don't have a denominator, but I will tell you this. In the package insert, it says five, less than 5%. I think it's more than 5%. And I think many men get these symptoms, but they're taking it when they're 60 or 65, and they think it's a normal part of aging, mm. right? They say, oh, I'm supposed to get ED. But a 30-year-old knows this is not normal. This isn't, yeah. the 20-year-old knows this is not normal. But but the, the key is this. Let's say you do or do not believe in post finasteride. I believe in it. Let's say you don't believe in it. Okay, you say it's not true. What you cannot deny is that there's an increased risk of suicides in this population of men, irrespective of whether you believe it's true or not. There's and I'm sorry, this is in all men who take finasteride or men, just no, young men? Cer certain men who have post-finasteride syndrome who take finasteride. There, so for example, I had a study. I had 25 men who had post-finasteride, 25 men who were controls. In my 25 The controls are men who took finasteride but had no who, symptoms. Who never took finasteride at all. Ah. And the reason I did that was the reason because I was looking at gene variation. I would take skin biopsy of both populations. I was looking at genes, upregulation, downregulation of genes between the two populations, just normal controls mm. and uh, finasteride. But um, two patients out of my 25 committed suicide in my trial. Okay. And so to me. And I'm sorry, the men who are taking finasteride in your trial, we're taking it for what reason? Pre predominantly alopecia. So you could technically argue that, and again, I'm, uh, that there's another issue going on, right? That whatever it is that's driving someone with alopecia to take finasteride for hair loss speaks to a difference in, you know, emotional state that might be predisposing them to some. In other words, it would be more interesting to see if you had 50 men who were all taking finasteride for the same indication, but you isolate the 25 who are experience the negative symptoms. symptoms. I think that would be very important. I agree. Or do a randomization. I agree. Yeah. But but in 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 either case, you know, it has to Bring some attention. Yeah, yeah. Eight percent suicide is an it, alarming it's, rate. And it, it and I, I'm surprised. And that was over what period of time? Uh, well, the, we, it was over a five year period. But it was my study was just a point in time. They'd come and visit. We would do the. But after they left, we follow up these patients. Eight percent. So 
how this is a, I mean, if you, if I told you any and, drug. And just to be clear again, to push back, because this is so important that, that we think through this rationally. Do we know what the history was of mental illness in those patients? Did they have a history of depression before taking the drug? So we, we, we do have history that none, we don't have significant mental illness before they come in. They weren't on SSRIs. They weren't have a history of depression when they came in. Right. So that's important to know that, mm. you know, they weren't diagnosed with depression prior, but but any drug, if I told you drug X, it yep. doesn't matter what you believe the cause is, is associated with higher suicidal uh, rates. I would say, okay, let's take a closer look yeah, yeah, and see what's sure. happening. It doesn't matter. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems to me that a random assignment trial would address yeah. this. And if you didn't want to do randomization, you would at least be able to do a post hoc analysis in the way that I've described it. And it's amazing that that's not being done. Do we see the same effect of dutasteride? So there have been uh, uh, du dutasteride, um, pa patients who've taken dutasteride had symptoms, but it's not as prominent, right? And I think probably it's because um, a, you know, a lot of the patients who were taking this were taking it for alopecia, so they were taking finasteride, yep. but there have been reports of dutasteride um, uh, symptoms the same way, right? So that's, I think that's important. So, so you know, I think more attention has to be given to this condition. Um, and that's why my personal bias, I do not give. So when right. men come to you on those products, yes. you'll say, if the guy's coming to you on that product for BPH, we've got the alpha yeah. strategy and the Cialis strategy. If the guy's coming you on that Guys coming to you on that product for yes. hair loss, you'll tell him what? I tell both men, if they're coming to me with BPH or alopecia, I tell them that there is a condition that's been associated with this, men taking this medication yep. that can cause an impairment uh, in uh, sexual function and acting actual depression and anxiety. So, you know, there's so many, many countries, Canada, France, UK, have put on their package insert. Black box. Not black box, but this warning saying that, hey, there's an increased risk of suicidal ideation. This is not trivial, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I think it's very interesting. Again, I mean, uh, technically SSRIs have that warning as well. Yeah. And it's never clear to me that SSRIs are causing an increase in suicide. It's mm -hmm. in, in part, I think that we're looking at a demographic that's more susceptible to suicide. So I, I think that's the thing I'd always struggle with. What I find most interesting about this, and I'm not doubting that there's something there, is why does it linger after the drug yeah. stops? That's the part that is undoubtedly most disconcerting. Yeah. It's if this is real, how is it that a guy can take this drug for a year, stop it, and two years later, he is still suffering yeah. the sexual side effects yeah. associated with it? Yeah. That, that strikes me as epigenetic. Right. I can't That's come exactly up with right. another explanation. That's exactly right. So there are many plausible mechanisms one being that could be epigenetic, one is silencing of the 5-ARI gene mm. through DNA methylation. Mm -hmm. So that's been the most common prevailing thought. Okay, uh, but we don't know. Yeah. But that's one of the most common thoughts. Yeah.